um, why they weren't um, taken more seriously. And here you have five artists who are serious, dedicated artists. But in my little world, I always felt that I was the one that was kind of pushing that boundary. I kind of saw that as a challenge. I think artists respond to the environment around them, but we don't always respond in the most direct or political ways because that's not necessarily our job. I feel like we're sometimes social filters. We sense things, we feel things, we see things. And, and some people are conceptual and think directly about them, so there's a lot of different ways of working. But I, I think the one commonality is that we are reactive. So we needed to show um, people in Dallas what our Latina artists are also doing and their backgrounds. So it's very interesting how, to see how all these women which have the same characteristics, you know, women, Latin, uh, we're uh, most of us living here in the States and all that, we have different things to show. It's not really a, a conscious effort with that I'm Latina, so I'm creating it, but more just when things happen, you know, and you have to go with whatever is, go with the flow, go with mm -hmm. what is, is calling you at the moment. Or Like part of Latino culture, if you will, is a sense of apoyo, that we help each other. One of the common things, obviously, is that they're all Latinas. Uh, I grew up in San Antonio, on the south side, in a neighborhood that was 100% Mexican-American. Well, being born and raised in South Texas, in Brownsville, you can't get any tip of Texas, we always used to say. Mm -hmm. I moved from uh, Colombia to the States when I was 19, and um, it's been a very um, powerful journey. Um, I was born in Mexico City, and I lived there um, for part of my youth and then came to Texas. I saw that, that uh, not a lot of exhibits are being done about Latinas. I don't sit there and think, how can I make this a piece that talks about me being Mexican-American or being a Latina? I don't, I don't think that way. I mean, I don't think about it, but, but I think that no matter what your culture is and no matter what your background is, it's always going to be there, just like okay. So growing up in Brownsville and, and the surroundings, you know, I was, it, we, are, we are a byproduct of what, how we grew up and what we see. Being Latina, of course, uh, has to do a lot with my identity. You know, I come from Latin America. Uh, things over there are very different from here. Here, being a Latina in the United States is also different than being an American artist or a Latino artist. I think being a Latina is uh, a, a essential part of my existence. Um, I think what happens is that we expect that those things become conditions in art. And yes, I would say influence first uh, was my surroundings of what I grew up, you know, being growing up Catholic and in South Texas and and the rich, you know, stories and heritage, you know, that Your culture. Our culture and the that I was surrounded by. There's many things to explore as your identity as uh, as, as so many things that you are, you know. Um, I'm an immigrant, I'm a Latin, I'm a mother, I'm an artist. Number two is that no matter where they come from or what Latin American country they come from or what their background may be, the struggles are the same, not only as Latinas, but as women artists. I had a lot of um, material around, and that was kind of like a world I could create when I wasn't comfortable or hadn't made friends yet to sort of... Uh, give myself a sense of place. So I think one of the reasons that um, art was very healing for me is that I could carry my place with me, you know, back and forth. We all have the same concerns, <laughs> uh, the same needs and wants for our families. Um, so that's how I approach a public art project, which is kind of similar to how I approach my own work. You know, what is it that I want to say uh, maybe it's something about, I don't know, a new baby in the family or mm -hmm. my mother that has passed away or... Although I have been here for 20-something years, 27 years, um, I'm still thinking that I'm uh, not completely, you know, a, a person that belongs 
to this culture. But when I go back to home, again, it's like I'm, I'm not from there anymore either. I'm like in this in-between place. I think we're political by, by virtue of being born women and by virtue of being part of a very large group of people who often doesn't have a voice. So that just puts you in a place where that's a part of your condition. Look and see what is happening with the art scenes in the Latinas. You know, communities that, that have certain ideas, certain feelings about things, mm -hmm. um, have certain interests or, or maybe a history that's really important. Um, and so it, it is, I do connect to it in that way because I know that certain um, things in my life are very important and I want to talk about them. So when I listen to a, a community talk about, well, this is important in our community because this is what happened here or this is what's happening now, then I, I can empathize with that because it's pretty universal. It's not. I'm not the only person thinking or feeling this. I'm, you know, I'm just like... Um, a person that can interpret that, put it in a tangible form, and I speak about something universal from my point of view. And there's nothing that says we can't keep on experimenting and doing different things. It's In the end, it's whatever I feel the designer that you're trying to create, what is the best medium that's going to make that come out? Or to, or to tell that story that you want to say it in so many different ways. I wanted to include Latinas that I was very familiar with their work as far as um, how they started and how they've progressed and, and in different ways how they've gone. And so when I first started like with the retablos and with a lot of the 3D media, I mean painting first but then it grew into the retablos and things like that, I do believe it had a lot of the Latino uh, influence. Uh, and and then later, as I traveled, as I saw different and the influences of our surroundings and everything else, it's when the, the work has grown to be more like contemporary. So I went to college uh, in the 70s when there was a lot of uh, financial aid and um, got a degree in biology. But I didn't see being an artist as a, um, as a profession that would take me out of the poverty <laughs> that I was in, in San Antonio, and in, in our circumstances, you know, as a second generation Mexican American. I used to make, um, I guess you could call it like really early art books. I would make my own cuadernos and mm -hmm. my own books. Um, and uh, I cut out a lot of things with paper, so really early on I was working with um, paper and I didn't know it was collage. For instance, Leticia Huerta you know, has gone uh, to do public art, which is different than when I first met her. She was doing studio work and painting flowers. My work has always been very personal and um, about family and, you know, sometimes more general, like things that we all worry about. I'm also very uh, connected to nature. So I worked on the Hampton Station, Westmoreland, and Tyler Vernon the, the, on the first line. And um, and that was the beginning of my public art career. And it, I knew Maria Teresa was painting her Corazones at the time that I met her. And then now she's gone into mosaics and, and taken that a whole nother level, talking about her mother and expressing her mother's um, you know, influence on her life. Quickly, what happened was that when my father passed away was when she became even stronger. And every time we would say, as I mentioned earlier, we can't or this is difficult, she would say, just go back and study, try again. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what molded all of us. That's, that's what helped us in life uh, to not take no. If somebody said it can't be done, no, you just have to study or paint longer or create. You know, it's, it's the history, the books we read, uh, the influence, and, and um, this series is growing. I mean, there's so many more ideas and things that I have that, I, that I'd like to create and, and do. With these, I feel like what's in and out uh, what
what's what's your foundation, right? Uh, and then your surrounding areas and things like that. So I mean, I, I think about that a lot as I'm creating, mm -hmm. uh, selecting the images or whether it's the words. You know, I mean, you think of prayer, right? But I selected mm -hmm. Garden of Prayer. Why Garden of Prayer? Because my mother was always in her garden uh, praying. I also took somebody like Yvonne Acero, who is Colombian, and who I could see the progression also in her work. The body is very important for me as an expression. Uh, this is who we are, you know, kind of like the naked truth. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we all conceal our bodies all the time. As a women, we're, we're supposed to conceal even more. So it depends very much on uh, the situation, but men or society wants us to conceal more, to conceal less, depending on the society or the culture that you're at. Um, right now, the talk about the self is, of course, the talk about identity, uh, and at the same time, you know, who I am as a woman, who I am as a mother, who I am as a professional. So all these identities that I have um, right now that describe me as a person, you know, uh, creating art is kind of like a dance between your mind and what um, the, the the actual piece itself. Um, and yet both of them inform each other. How much she's grown from from that time of doing the butterflies and uh, using different other methods to what she's going to be exhibiting now. Of course, as an artist, you know, you have to evolve. Mm -hmm. And um, a work that you do always informs the next body of work that you are going to work on. I use things like uh, pattern paper or, you know, like trims and findings of the industry. Um, I talk about the seamstresses, I talk about the um, culture and the social um, culture of my country, which is very different from here. Sara Cardona, I had seen where she was using a different method also in her creativity to creating um, more collaging and, and uh, using it in a different way. Now my work, I still think of them as characters and I still think of them as stories, but I have removed the people and have just literally left the objects uh, that they use on their bodies, so maybe clothing or hair or skin, so they're sort of fragments of people rather than being figurative, but they, in my mind, are still uh, kind of like animated figures. Um, I think sometimes media creates a strangely beautiful or glamorized image of something really kind of tragic, so some of these, not all of these pieces, are kind of a boundary between beauty and horror um, and the presence and the absence of a person. Well, in selecting, and in Maida Barraza's was more that I saw her work at Liliana Block's gallery and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the mirrors that she did eyes on. I was fascinated by those eyes that she painted. Each one of them has been impacted, I would say, from their culture, from their environment, from their upbringing. And it has continued to to uh, to show in their work that it doesn't matter how much they change or what methods they're using, it continues to show in their work. And you are you are what you are, um, and your experiences growing up, you're always going to be that. Um, I was raised in, in Colombia, and my parents had a, a clothing factory. So since I was very little, I was, you know, in front of all these kind of like a culture, in, mm -hmm. you know, as, as far as, you know, the industry, the uh, how things are done. I started out doing a lot of figurative work because um, I've always, I, I've grown up around stories like, uh, my grandfather was a writer, I grew up with, you know, theater, my father works in film, so I, I don't know, strangely, like narrative and storytelling has been a really big part of my life. Every Sunday after service, we would go to the beach, we'd go to San Padre mm -hmm. Island, and we'd go out and we'd cook out, and we'd have all these like wonderful mm -hmm. gatherings, and it was so simple, but it was for us, we were rich. And 
And so this right here, you see a lot of the symbolism in my work. Like these up here are all shells, different shells. I always remember going to the beach, and it was like we had won the lottery. We go and we spend the we spend the whole night. In the morning, we get up very early to go and see which of the shells that we were going to mm -hmm. gather. And, and my mom had just passed away, like at the beginning of this project, and so I was really um, needing to say something about that, I suppose. And because I wasn't doing my own personal work, it found its way into my public artwork. Mm -hmm. It goes back to being identical twin. Um, this is something that defines me so very much that I would never consider myself myself without my twin. The, the Latino Cultural Center was a, a fantastic uh, venue for this show. We have a very strong collective community. Um, we are there to support each other and specifically as women because all of us, even the most successful women, uh, you know, female artists, know that what they've had to do has been to work harder oftentimes than their male counterparts. They are more um, usually open and receptive to helping other women. So I don't think it's a mistake that we're all here because we have a, a, a woman curating us. So my thought was, let's see what they come with. Let's see what they're bringing to the table. Yeah. And that was the making of this exhibit. I already started experimenting and doing different other materials as well. As a matter of fact, some of them that I talked to you earlier was where I used not only those shoes with the shells, but in the bottom it had the sand in different layers, kind of like at the end where it showed the wave, and then even writing like writing in the sand to where it had like the poems in there as well. That's how men perceive us, uh, how women perceive women, um, issues of maybe aging, you know, I'm aging, I'm, I'm going to be 50, so it's, it's kind of thinking, you know, as a woman, who am I right now? And the dress is representing, you know, that. You know, that famous mm -hmm. saying was that art is a lie that tells the truth. But in a way, it's like each of us has a real internal truth. Um, and, and making the art is like, um, we're making all these artificial things. But in a way, what we're really doing is pulling out this kind of internal truth. So we needed to show um, people in Dallas what our Latina artists are also doing. I mean, it was a way to just keep working and try to figure out what it is you want to say and I think that that helped you know just keep sketching keep writing keep doing something or come up with some more ideas you know it's kind of like in brainstorming or when we're mm -hmm. thinking of something you know you come up with all these ideas until you narrow it down to what is the final essence all of us come from a different point of view all of us uh, treat different uh, themes and issues and each of us are going to interpret things very differently. Some pieces suggest themselves. Some are more uh, sinister, some are more delicate. And so I let all of that mood be there without judgment. Um, I've made some pieces that were kind of so scary to even myself that I thought, how did this end up being this way? <laughs> and, uh, but I just let it go. That's part of you know, the, the process. And most of the pieces, I would say, I'll do these loose like sketches ideas that I have. Sometimes I'll write things down. I'll say, what if, you know, and I'll, I'll have the very quick sketches and ideas and then, and with the use of material. And sometimes even when I create or have that, a little work just transforms and it changes itself. I may have an idea, but as I'm using the materials, it's changing. If I want to express this thought, how would I do it? Or in a, in a moment in time, there is like this vision of like, oh, it would be nice to do something like this. I mean, we're artists, we take on challenges. We work out um, our ideas on in whatever form we do it, whether it's on canvas, on paper, um, three-dimensionally. I mean, we're constantly doing that. We're figuring out how to do something. So public art is no different from that. And I want to dispel the myth that it's just sort of like you know, all this creative stuff happens sort of accidentally. It takes a lot of um, 
letting go of the ego of just being open to, and again, that's, I think, what Martha Graham's saying, like, don't judge yourself. Don't, you know, not everything you make is wonderful and beautiful, but the important part is the making, is the showing up to do it. I think that actually uh, keeping the logs and keeping your journal are very, very important for an artist. Um, as a journal, I do a lot of these, um, not a lot of entries, but a lot of research, and I put them, you know, in in writing a lot of bubble maps. That's how more of my uh, creative process comes from. You don't want to take the first idea that you come up with. You want to keep working it mm -hmm. and see whether something even better comes out of it. Um, and so that's how I start, is just drawing, just... And sometimes those drawings don't go anywhere. They end up, you know, not working at all. Mm -hmm. So then you start again. But it's that just process of thinking yeah. and rethinking and drawing and redrawing. Moving on to orchestrate. Um, I kind of feel like a seance, like, you know, the Ouija boards where you move things around and you let things sort of help guide you. Uh, there's a kind of an interesting process for me with collage. I don't have to paint the image directly so my accountability is once removed. I feel like I work with the images and there's a certain amount of consciousness but there's also a certain amount of chance and accident which is really important with this work. That was really exciting to me was working on a gate and so I just started sketching and I knew that 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 this drawing could never be translated into a gate because it's too complex um, you know, lines were too small, but for me, even though I know that this isn't exactly what it's going to be, I start just drawing. And this is based on the plants in that area, the agave. Mm -hmm. um, but I must have done like 10 of these. Look and see what is happening with the art scenes in the Latina scene. Um, collage making is a direct relationship to the materials. and. Um, to be honest with you, I think what's really important to me as an artist is not to overthink my work, but to feel my way through the work. I'm working a lot with um, pipe, uh, pattern paper, mm -hmm. which is the commercial pattern paper. Uh, and then I like to use uh, threads, and uh, this one has also got mm -hmm. um, threads and needles and pins and all that. That is, is kind of like my new... Um, language in art. In public art, it just like opened up everything. It's like all the materials that exist on earth I could use in my work if I wanted to. There was no limit to what I could do um, or I felt that way. And so I started using tile and wood and metal and all kinds of things in my work that I had never used before. I started casting uh, pieces of clay and then attaching them to the work and, and the glass I was trying to find a material where I can use the photographs and the mixed media that I had done and the only thing I could think of but also protecting it was to use the glass in the different shapes. I will sort maybe from just color or shapes so it's a little different but usually like I said it looks like almost like a pile of laundry especially if I'm dealing with with the clothing pieces. Um, when I do the skin and hair, I, um, I do with the, with the skin so that it's not repetitive. I mean, I do look for different skin types. The gut for me has so much meaning because it's something that is, you know, from your entrails. It's, it's just your um, intuition. And that's how my work, come, where my work comes from. Um, it's not from here, it's from my gut. If you work on canvas, if you're a figurative painter, then you could probably do a mural, you know? Or you can take your figurative work and have it translated into a, um, a uh, ceramic or glass mosaic tile. Since for some of my uh, designs, I realize that some of the most simple things can be the most complicated you know, to try to solder and try to create images on both and where it has to be perfect, you know, especially if you're soldering two different sides together. With this exhibit, let's see how much more they're going to grow and what more directions they will take. Where, where I'm returning to that, maybe not full time, to but uh -huh, to the studio work, but, um, but as part of my life. 
And as I see maybe that my public art might slow down a little, although it's not slowing down right now, um, that it might slow down. Um, and I suppose that'll be my choice if I wanted to slow down and not apply for projects. Um, Last series that I uh, created was like a family and I, and I was very much into memory, childhood, uh, what these things represent to me, who these people were to me and all that. Uh, but now I'm more going into kind of like maybe what the dress represents for me right now, which is women, you know, womanhood. The other thing that I've wanted to do maybe is to get into a little bit of animation where things move around, mm -hmm. you know, and it's funny because it's like I've always seen animation. I never ever thought about doing it, but um, I feel like that's a really cool thing about making work is you don't know where it's going to take you. It's like a train that might go on a different course. Um, so that's that's kind of something that's been floating around in my mind is how to make these things feel like they're moving or living. And um, 